Interesting interview with Andy Ruiz on AFL TV over the weekend. He expressed serious doubts that Deontay Wilder is going to fight him next. And the reason he gave for this is that he thinks Wilder doesn't want that fourth fight with Tyson Fury. And of course, if Wilder fought Andy Ruiz, that would be a final eliminator with the winner becoming mandatory for Tyson Fury. And I have to imagine this is at least partly based on what Malik Scott, Wilder's trainer, has said in recent interviews. He said, quote, what I want is Alexander Usyk next. What I want is Anthony Joshua next. It's looking like we may have to settle for Andy Ruiz, but I'm hoping not. I don't mean that in a way to tear down Andy. Andy is a very dangerous fighter, but I'm looking at history making fights, stadium filling fights like Joshua versus Wilder, Wilder versus Usyk, Wilder versus Fury 4. I'm interested in these kind of fights. But if we have to take Ruiz, then we have to take Ruiz. End quote. So those were the words of Malik Scott. Now, while I think Ruiz might be onto something with regards to Wilder not wanting to go straight into a fourth Fury fight if he manages to get past Ruiz, I also think that maybe Ruiz is being deliberately humble here or he's overlooked something. But I think that the risk reward with Andy Ruiz isn't favorable. I think that's the way Team Wilder look at it. That's the way Malik Scott looks at it. Because if Deontay Wilder takes on a Anthony Joshua, there's a risk there. If he takes on an Alexander Usyk, there's a risk there. But the reward is seemingly much bigger. The Wilder AJ fight will be huge financially. The, uh, relatively speaking, right? I'm not saying it's the biggest fight in boxing, but it would still be a money spinner for both men. The Wilder Usyk fight is a world title opportunity for Deontay Wilder against someone who hasn't previously knocked him out. So you can see the appeal of that. I don't know how much money would be on the line. You have to imagine it would be still a good payday for Deontay Wilder. Whereas with Andy Ruiz, there's no title. And Ruiz doesn't bring the same uh, money potential as an Anthony Joshua, let's say, if that fight between AJ and Wilder happened in the UK. So, yeah, I just think that the risk reward for Team Wilder, they're looking at Ruiz and they're thinking, okay, it's high risk. The reward is not that great. Ruiz didn't do great numbers, apparently, for the Luis Ortiz fight. And obviously, Deontay Wilder apparently didn't do great numbers for the Robert Hellenius fight. So, in the twilight of Deontay Wilder's career, because he's in his, what, mid late 30s now, I can understand why they're focusing on just the big fights. However, from a boxing fan perspective, I don't want to see him leapfrog the Andy Ruiz's of the world. Because when he was champion, Deontay Wilder fought a horribly low level of opposition for many years. He had a really cozy relationship with the WBC, where they were giving him soft mandatories a lot of the time. So I want to see Deontay Wilder back in the ring, yes, because I think he's a fantastically exciting heavyweight. But I think that in the interest of fairness and for the good of the heavyweight division and the good of the sport, he should have to earn his shot by going through an Andy Ruiz, going through a Philip Pergovich or whoever else is out there before he gets the opportunity. I think that that really helps the division when fighters have to go through those steps, particularly a fighter with the kind of track record that Deontay Wilder has when he was champion of being a protected fighter. If we have a division where we get lots of different matchups, so it's not just a few three, four guys at the top fighting each other in constant rematches. No, we get variety. We get the contenders lower down. We get the young up and coming guys in the mix. All of that is what makes for a golden age in heavyweight boxing. It's not just two or three guys at the top fighting each other. It's everybody getting involved. So that's my take on it. Give me your take in the comment section below about Andy Ruiz's interview here. Him thinking that Deontay Wilder isn't particularly keen on facing him. And look, I'm not saying that. Andy Ruiz would definitely beat Deontay Wilder. But again, in my mind, I'm looking at it from a risk reward perspective. I'm trying to imagine why Malik Scott, perhaps even Wilder himself, whoever else in uh, that particular team, would not want an Andy Ruiz. He may want the U6s. He may want the AJs. He may want these other guys. Are they going to be available? Well, I guess that's where Malik Scott did concede. If it has to be Andy Ruiz next, then I guess we have to take on Andy Ruiz. I hope it's Andy Ruiz next. I've always wanted to see Andy Ruiz versus Deontay Wilder. I think that's a fantastic matchup. I think with Ruiz and Wilder, you've got two of the most explosive 
fighters in the division. This might be the two most explosive fighters. And when I say explosive, I'm talking about speed and power. Deontay Wilder is recognized by most people as the hardest puncher in the division. Ruiz can punch. He doesn't punch like Wilder, but he's explosive. His power punches come out real fast and they're sudden. You know, I've often talked over the years about why I prefer watching explosive fighters as opposed to more methodical fighters. And it's because of the element of surprise that explosive fighters bring to the table. You see, when you've got a fighter like, let's say, I don't know, Antonio Margarito, he can punch, but you can see his knockouts coming a mile off. He's walking guys down, he's wearing them down, and then eventually, you know, the guy starts looking a bit shaky, then Margarito hits him with a two-piece and they're on the floor. Similar situation with Gennady Golovkin, right? You can see, see most of Golovkin's knockouts coming before they happen, where he's wearing guys down and he's starting to hurt them gradually, and then suddenly, bang, the left hook comes in, but you could sense that it was coming. Whereas with an explosive fighter, like an Andy Ruiz, a Deontay Wilder, I'm going to go further back, David Hay, these kind of guys. With explosive fighters, the opponent can be completely lucid, both guys in the ring are completely okay, everyone's fresh, and then bang, out of nowhere, this fast shot comes and drops somebody. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's why I tend to prefer explosive fighters, just in terms of the entertainment value. I'm not saying explosive, excuse me, explosive fighters are better than uh, fighters who are less explosive. Obviously, Tyson Fury has proved that that's not the case with regards to Deontay Wilder. But yeah, just from an entertainment perspective, I like seeing the explosive element that certain fighters have. And also because it's not the norm, right? Most fighters are not that explosive. So when you get a guy who is explosive that comes along, they kind of stand out. The best example being Mike Tyson. I mean, he was tremendously explosive. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Me personally, I'd love to see Deontay Wilder versus Andy Ruiz, two explosive guys going at it. Let me know what you think. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms, and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship-free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, it's decentralized, and it's 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract. There's no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.